Hi there and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me Julian and today we want to talk about how to track YouTube videos that are embedded on a website with the help of Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. But before we get started, as always, these little videos are brought to you by gtmtraining.com and if you're new to Google Tag Manager, I can only wholeheartedly recommend our free email course under gtmtraining.com slash email course where you'll get five little emails that will slowly explain to you what Google Tag Manager is all about and give you a little bit of a tutorial on how it can be hugely valuable when doing any kind of internet marketing on your site. So please check that out at gtmtraining.com slash email course. Our journey today starts all here at the blog of Cardinal Path where Stefan Hamel has written a blog post on how to track YouTube videos with the help of Google Tag Manager almost a year ago, but it was updated quite recently to accommodate the newest changes of Google Tag Manager and YouTube. And he describes a method here on how to implement a custom listener and then track interactions with your YouTube videos on your website and then forward these interactions onto Google Analytics. Apart from that, I wholeheartedly recommend the resource Cardinal Path as a blog and also one of my go-to resources for anything Google Tag Manager related. So check them out at cardinalpath.com. Now let's get started with our implementation of today. I have made up on our blog.demoshop a little blog post with three different videos here. And what we want to be able to track is actually when somebody clicks, starts playing this video pausing it and also we'll get events such as how far the user has actually watched. So if he has watched 0%, 25, 50 or 75 when he stopped this video. And that gives us some great insights into our videos and also how they are used on our website. So how can we track this with the help of Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics? First of all, this video needs to be embedded in a certain way. So if you go to edit post, we can see how I've embedded these into this WordPress blog post. And this is basically the embed code that you get from YouTube. So if you are on a YouTube video, want to share it, we have here the embed option, and then we get the code that we can copy and then post in our blog. So for example, here, post this in our CMS. The only thing that we need to additionally change is to enable the JavaScript API, which is this little appendix here in the back of the URL and make it the JavaScript API is enabled in this video. And we just need to append it to our embed URL, obviously also to close it here. And that way our YouTube video will be ready to spit out the data then we'll move forward with Google Tag Manager. So once we go back here, we still have our three videos, which are now embedded with the API version of the embed code. Now we just have to read the events that are spit out when I click on this play button with the help of Google Tag Manager. So how do we do this? First of all, we will build a listener. Let's go over to our Google Tag Manager account. Under tags, we'll start out by creating a new tag which will be our listener for YouTube videos. I will implement a trigger which only fires on the page number 33, but this obviously would be different for your page. As the product, we'll go with a custom HTML tag and we'll configure this tag with the custom listener that was built by Stefan Hamel, which will listen for our YouTube activity. So let's copy this listener that we see right here. Go over to our Google Tag Manager account and implement it into our custom HTML tag. All right, now we can proceed and on this option, on the fire in option, we can choose the trigger 
when our custom listener should listen for these YouTube events. And we might not want to listen on all of pages for these YouTube events. So we'll go here with a custom trigger that we'll build right now. We'll click on new and we'll call this YouTube video page, which will be our page number 33. And this will be deployed on the event of DOM ready because we need to wait till our videos have fully loaded in order to pick up these events. And we'll go with continue and we'll only fire them on some page views where our page URL contains 33. Now, this is just the example for our website because we are on page number 33 here. You could change it to any page URL and adapt this trigger. If you have videos on multiple pages within your web page, you might want to try out the variable that Stefan Hamel has here in his blog post, which will tell you whether there is a YouTube video embedded into the blog post and therefore deploy this listener. But for our purposes, we will just go with a simple page view trigger upon the page load of this blog post. All right, let's create this trigger and save our tag and now go over to the preview and debug mode. Now we will reload our page and we can get the preview and debug console down here and we see that our listener for our YouTube video was deployed. What does it do? Let's click on one of these videos and we see different events in our preview and debug console. Once we click on one of these events, we see in the data layer section, that there was an event fired into the data layer with the action play and the label of the YouTube ID plus the name. If you go to the other events here, we see that the action is 0% and the label stays the same because it's the same video. But if you take another video, let's do that. We see more events again and we have again an event, a play and a name with a different video here. So all of this can be picked up by Google Tag Manager and then forwarded over to Google Analytics. What do we need to do to take that information and actually send it over to Google Tag Manager? Well, first we pick up this information with data layer variables. So let's go over to Google Tag Manager and create these variables. Let's go over to variables and create a new data layer variable. We'll go here with the type of data layer variable and we'll simply name this after the variable name. So here is the action. And name this variable also action. And create this variable. The second variable I want to create is the label. And it's also a data layer variable. We'll pull out the key of label in the data layer. Let's create this as well. So now that we have these two variables in here and also in our variable menu, we should see once we refresh the preview and debug mode and also our page, once we click on a video, we still see our YouTube events in here, but now they should be also available under the variables menu. So let's see here, we have a label which pulled out the right values and we also have an action hopefully, here we go, which is the play action. Now all we need to do is take these variables and put them on to our Google Analytics account. Let's go over to Google Tag Manager and build a new tag for this. Let's click new and this will be our Google Analytics event for our YouTube videos. 
and we'll go with the product, obviously, Google Analytics. We have Universal Analytics running and the tracking ID is already saved in a constant variable, which is our analytics ID. And on the track type, we'll choose event. And then we can fill out our category, which I will call video. And our action will be dynamically filled by our action variable. And our label will be automatically filled by our label variable. So now we have that installed and we can click on continue. And the fire option is actually an event in the data layer. So we'll have to make up a new trigger, which is our YouTube trigger. And it will turn true upon a custom event called Look back in the data layer, YouTube. And we don't have to have filters because we want to turn this trigger true as soon as this YouTube event appears in our data layer. Let's create this trigger and create our tag. Now we will refresh our preview in debug mode. Now, so go back to our page. and look at our videos. Let's start this video. Maybe also skip around. So we have maybe different events in here. And also start another video. All right, and let's do a little bit of quality check. We'll go over to our Google Analytics account and under our real-time reporting on the events, we should see different events that just fired and are now filled into our Google Analytics reports. The event category stays the same video, but the event action changed dynamically. So we have here 0, 25, 75%. We have the action pause and play. And once we want to know which videos have actually played, we can look into them. Nope. Yes, under the event label here, we can also see what specific video was just played. So this is all working correctly. Now later you would obviously find also the full results in the event report available for your analysis. Okay, since this works, we can go ahead and publish this as a version to all our users. And from now on, all our videos on that page will be tracked and we get awesome data into our Google Analytics account. So that's already it with this week's video of gtmtraining.com. If you want to find out more about Google Tag Manager, please check out our free email course at gtmtraining.com slash email course. And if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Or if you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. My name is Julian. Till next time.